Yeah. Jimmy, um, Patrick Horgan obviously still on the scene this year and what a brilliant season. He had 35 years of age now. First off, what did you make of him? Just he's What an Indian summer he continues to have. And number two, do you think he, he should stay around next year if, if he has the appetite? Well, I thought he was absolutely fantastic this year again. I mean, he was a or standout player again. I thought last Sunday, even in the heat of battle, the two outstanding players for Cork were Hoggy and Jamie Arnody. I mean, I thought they were fantastic. And uh, I, my admiration for them, for both of them knows no end, really. I, I was lucky enough to manage them for a couple of years. We just fell short in the and final. But their their dedication and their they live for the game, their fitness levels are extraordinary. And uh, I'd see no reason whatsoever. I mean, if I was manager of Cork next year, I'd be doing my hands and knees. Getting, ask them to play, but there'll be no question because they'll play on anyway. Hoggy just lives for the game, and uh, there'll be no question whatsoever until he, um, until he really feels he's gone completely, and he's certainly not that. I, as, as I said, there were two standout players last Sunday, I thought, and uh, you know, great, great for their players of their age to show that they, if you mind yourself and, and prepare properly, that you can play at this level still. Mm, and the same, I suppose, for TJ Reid as well. I mean, like to some of these lads that are continuing to play 15 years on, Seamus Callan would be another. Yeah. And Shane Dooley, even Joe's son as well. Like, it's incredible mm. the longevity well, of some of these lads. Shane is fant- Shane's fantastic player and uh, has given massive service again. And, you know, it is tough when the county is down and you're trying to battle away. And fairness to the, the, the likes of Shane now and Patrick Horgan and Shamie Harney, they've battled through tough times now. And, uh, as I said, if I was manager of Cork next year, I'd certainly want them. And you know, you look at Wexford, say like really, yeah. you have no, you have Noel McGrath and Tipperary and Shem yeah, Callan Noel and McGrath, all these lads as well. Yeah. You know, like fellas that have a lot of mileage on the clock, but they're still they're still producing the goods, which is. But if you if you mind yourself and watch what you eat and and prepare properly, there's nothing to stop you playing. Once the legs don't slow, you, once you don't naturally slow down, you know that's yeah. It, just, it, it shows the way Noel McGrath reads the game. What a fantastic player yeah, he is! Well, yeah. I mean, he gave a pass against Limerick. Uh, over his head, I think any player in the country, country would have done it apart from Noel. He's playing midfield now and he's playing better than ever and getting through the game with no bother. But again, it's just sheer skill and class gets you through in most situations if you have it. And that's why you asked me about Hoggy. Like, what a player. I mean, he's no question him not playing on next year, in my opinion, anyway. No. Mm. Do you think, do you think, lads, um, I'll throw it to you first, Joe. Do you think, lads, are retired too early? You stayed going, Joe. I think you started in 84. Was, am I right in saying 2000 was your last year? Yeah, from yeah, yeah. 82, 82 was my first year and 2000 was my last one. Yeah, but sure. Like, and, I, and, and I hadn't even intended to retire that year. It was just my, my mother in law passed away suddenly. She was a, um, a cork woman and just that kind of made me mind up for me, to be honest. But no, if, like, but as I say, some people, if, if you can avoid injury and some players maybe just lose their speed a little bit earlier than others as well. So you need to be a little bit lucky that way too, I think, you know. And um, but, but I think the, the main thing is if you mind yourself and if you're dedicated enough, you can stay going up to your mid thirties. Yeah. Jimmy, you went to thirty three, did you? Had you did you had had you had enough at that stage? You obviously had a fairly jam packed career between hurling of football and club level, club and county. Was it a stage of you'd had enough or was it an injury or no, just just very much like I had enough. I played since minor since seventy one with Cork until I played, I played football and hurling up to nineteen eighty, and then I concentrated on hurling for the next six years. So I just felt that I, really my app and Joe made a point there. My I felt my pace was going, and that was always a big factor for me. And I just felt that yard of pace was gone, and you know I I just felt it was time to call it a day. Then I'd had enough. And my appetite was gone as well, but that yard of pace certainly made up my mind for me. I went to chase. I got with the Galway goalkeeper in '86 out for a ball out. I wasn't getting anywhere fast, so I said, uh, "Get all while the going is good." Yeah, I think, actually, you know, I think I think you know when your time comes. I anyway. think you do. You, sure, you yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah. You I have remember to have um, the real drive and hunger as yeah, well. T- you know, yeah. T- in 2012, when we we took over Cork again, I came back for my second time, and uh, Ben O'Connor was on the panel still and manager on Sunday now, obviously, and. Uh, Oh, yeah, we were desperate for Ben to play on. We played Dublin in Croke Park and Ben rang me on the Monday morning and said, uh, we played Dublin in the league in Croke Park. And he said, Jimmy, I'm gone. There's no one. And you, you could, one person you could not try to persuade was Ben O'Connor. When Ben made up his mind and he was totally honest, my pace is gone. Jimmy said, I'm out, gone. Thanks for everything. And that was it. it was, <laughs> I, I was not, I had to have to check them on the Monday morning. So I had other things on my mind as well. I remember, I remember that we had been on the show a while back and he said that they, I don't think they could release a statement until you came back or something at the end of the week or something like that. But that's not, that's not strictly true. But uh, <laughs> I was hoping, I was hoping he might change his mind before I came back. Yeah. 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 And Jimmy, I was chatting to Brian Cody a couple of years ago and, um, I was asking him, do you still go for a few pucks? And he says, no. And again, he you know, decided uh, the house, he'd have a few pucks or whatever. 
Would you still have a few pucks these days? No, I literally haven't caught a hurley since 1986 in my hand. Go away. No. And like, was there, is there not just a love of even, do you know, a cathartic feeling of just pucking the ball around and you just feel like you've unwound after it? Not really, no. I don't get that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> just like You're honest, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, love, look, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a great support now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't feel the need to get a hurley in my hand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, Joe, do you? Uh, the odd time I would, yeah. Like, a wall out the back there, I felt the ball against him, but the very odd time, to be honest. When, I, I mean, I say, when I see kids down the green playing soccer on the air, so I'd love to have joined it for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 